before we will jump right into the tutorial, I want to make a short introduction. If you need any help of me and my team, then please don't hesitate to contact us. We will help you with any technical problems with your website. Below this video, you'll find our contact details. See you soon. Bye. All right, so in the last video, we updated our server. Uh, we connected to it as our pseudo user. We also created our pseudo user and we prepared our server for installing WordPress. Now in this lesson, we're going to be uh, making sure our domain is ready to go uh, with WordPress and we'll also be using easyengine.io to install WordPress on our server. So the first thing we're gonna want to do is open up Putty and we wanna connect to our server. So I'm going to connect here to my server and I'm going to log in as my pseudo user. Authenticating with my private key, I'm now logged in and we're ready for the next step. So before we get started with installing WordPress, which I promise is coming soon, we wanna make sure that our domain is on DigitalOcean so that we can easily control it and get WordPress working with our, our domain as quickly as possible. So this is where uh, the part of the tutorial might be different for you, uh, and that is domain name, uh, name server changing. And uh, this is entirely dependent on who is your domain name host. Uh, in this case, I'm using GoDaddy for some test domains that I have. And uh, the domain I will be testing with is standarddonut.com. Don't ask me why I have standarddonut.com, but it is one of the test domains that I will be using. And uh, what we want to do with our domain is we want to change what's called a name server. And a name server is simply going to point our domain over to DigitalOcean so that we can use DO to, on, um, to uh, configure our domain for our server. So what we wanna do is we want to manage our name servers. So I'm gonna click on manage and I'm gonna click on edit name servers. Now again, this might be uh, slightly different for your domain name provider, um, but it's generally pretty straightforward. We want to change our name servers um, to what DigitalOcean recommends. Now I would, I would definitely check with what the um, DigitalOcean name servers at the time in case this tutorial becomes dated, but currently I know that they are ns1.digitalocean com as well as ns2.digitalocean.com we're going to have to click ok and then we're going to click uh, add another one most um, most companies only let you add two but there is a third one ns3.digitalocean.com so i'm just going to add that in so now that i have three ns1 ns2 and ns3.digitalocean.com we're gonna click save, and now this may take five to 15 minutes in order for um, these changes to propagate through um, the World Wide Web. And once that has occurred, we will be able to add our domain into DigitalOcean. So I'm gonna wait a couple minutes and come back, and then we'll check and make sure our domain is working on DigitalOcean. Okay, so a bit of an update. Um, I had to use a different domain that was already pointed to DigitalOcean because it's been over three hours and um, GoDaddy has not updated the name servers. This process of updating name servers um, should only take five to 15 minutes. So I'm getting very unlucky uh, with GoDaddy's service at this point. Uh, so I'm going to use a different domain that is already configured with these domains ready to go. And I don't think that you should run into these errors of having long name server transfer times. Uh, like I said, it usually takes about 15 minutes. So I'm going to be using this domain instead. And uh, basically what we want is once our name servers show on our domain host that they have been updated successfully, we want to copy over our domain and uh, I'm just going to type it out here. And I'm gonna click add domain. Okay, so now you can see that DigitalOcean has picked up. They've made the connection between, in this case, GoDaddy. They've seen that my domain is now pointed towards their name servers. And they've now allowed us uh, this configuration screen so we can start setting up our domain name. As you can see here, our, in our DNS records, there are three entries, our name servers that are directing our domain to DigitalOcean. And in this case, we want to direct our host name, which is going to be the domain name. 
So we simply enter in the at symbol here, and we want to direct this traffic to WordPress. Now, what this is doing is it's telling our host name, this, in this case, rustygoodsgaming.com, to redirect all traffic to our WordPress, WordPress droplet, which has this IP address here. So let's click Create Record. And you can see now that that record is live. Now, a helpful tool to test out your DNS records is DNS propagation, uh, which is actually it's called whatsmydns.net. So let's click on this, and you'll, you'll be presented with this screen. And we want to check our A record. Remember, our A record is what directs our traffic to our droplet. Now let's type in our domain name. And let's search. So you can see here 67.205.153.37 is that the address of our droplet? It just so happens to be. And that means that all of our traffic is now being directed to this server. That is the link between our domain name and our server. Okay, so now we know that this droplet can be accessible by our domain name. We want to begin the process of installing Easy Engine on the server. So the first step in installing Easy Engine is heading to easyengine.io. Once we're on easyengine.io, let's go ahead and open up Putty and make sure that we're connected to our server. We definitely want to be logged in as our sudo user. Now that we have Easy Engine open, we want to run this first command up here. Now for these commands, I usually type sudo in front to make sure that we have the proper permissions to run these commands. And I'm simply going to right click and it's going to copy this command in. Clicking enter, it's going to ask us for our sudo password for our user. Enter again, you can see that it's executing the apt get update. And it, what it's doing in the back end is it's installing Easy Engine onto our server automatically. Okay, so as Easy Engine is finishing up installing itself over on my left side here, let's go ahead and scroll down and check out the different types of WordPress sites we can create with Easy Engine. Now, one of the benefits of using Easy Engine is it's creating a professional stack um, for our WordPress site. Now, if you remember back to the beginning lessons, I talked about the, um, the pre-built installations that you can install with DigitalOcean to get WordPress working. Now, those installations are using um, very basic tech in terms of software to run WordPress. And the awesome thing about WordPress is you can use all sorts of different pieces of software in order to optimize WordPress. So the reason that I point people in the direction of easyengine.io is because Easy Engine is installing a professional level stack uh, all automated onto our server. So I can build out these stacks, uh, but it would take me hours and hours in order to get everything installed, configured, and working correctly. With Easy Engine, however, I'm able to uh, install the same exact stack that would take me hours to build in a custom way. I'm able to do that um, automatically with these commands. Now, Easy Engine is free to use. It's a great piece of software. This is this. Tutorial series is not sponsored by Easy Engine in any way, but I do really like their software and that's why I recommend them. So looking at the 15 different types of WordPress sites, you'll need to find one that suits you. Um, you can install WordPress multi-site using Easy Engine. In my case, I'm going to be installing just a single site. Now, most people will be installing a single site. If you want to get a little more advanced and you think that you're going to be running different sub blogs, uh, you can try using multi-site. You can always upgrade from a single site to a multi-site using Easy Engine as well. Now, in my experience, I think using Easy Engine with the Redis cache is one of the better options. Uh, my own site runs with the Nginx cache, which works pretty well. Um, but I've been experimenting with the Redis cache, and I like a lot of things about it. So we're going to be installing this configuration here. So let's scroll back up and look at our command that's going to install our website. And remember, we need to modify this so that it's going to be installing Redis. So it's very easy to do that. Let's look back over at our server here. Okay, it's, it's going to ask us to enter our name in. And it's going to ask us to enter our email in. I'm just going to enter in that as an email. And it's just finishing up everything. 
Okay, so Easy Engine is done installing. Now we can install WordPress. So let's type out this second line command here. We're going to type sudo e site site create. And then we're going to enter in our domain name that we've set up. Making sure we type it out correctly. And then we want to type hyphen hyphen WP Redis because what that's going to do is install Redis on our site. Now we're just gonna click enter and it's gonna ask us, do you want to install Redis? This is an experimental feature. Click yes. And at this point, Easy Engine is going to take over and it's going to start installing all of these packages for you. It's gonna configure your server um, and it's, it's really nice. It sets up everything the way it's supposed to be set up and we'll have WordPress working in just a couple minutes here. Okay, so Easy Engine has finished installing WordPress and our entire stack on our server. And there's a couple important things that we need to copy out of our command line here. You can see that there is an HTTP auth username, password, as well as a WordPress admin username and password. We want to copy these out. And the easy way to do this is to just select this with a left click and drag. And once you release left click, it's now been copied to our uh, to our clipboard. Uh, now if I just open up Notepad and I'm just going to paste this information in and it's important to keep this information um, because we're going to need this to log into our new WordPress site. So let's go ahead and save this to our desktop as login. With that saved, let's go ahead and minimize this. We'll be using it in just a second here. There's a couple things that we need to tidy up in Easy Engine. One thing you can see is that the default installation of Easy Engine installs PHP 5.6, which is starting to get a bit dated. It definitely works just fine, but we want to update our site to PHP 7.0, which is uh, very fast. So in order to do that, we simply have to run this command. Okay, so this command, sudo ee site update rustygutsgaming.com hyphen hyphen php7, when we run this, it's going to update our site to php7. So I'm going to click on Y and enter. And then you can see Easy Engine is going to install php7 and configure it for us for that website. Okay, so we can see that ee has successfully updated our website. And now we're ready to go and configure WordPress on our site. So I'm going to open up a new tab here and open up our site. So I've navigated to our domain and you can see that we have a fresh WordPress installation here. This is looking good, but we definitely want to log in to the admin side of our website. In order to do that, we all we all we have to do is type in forward slash admin in our URL bar and that will redirect us to our WP login page. Now to log into our website, we simply need to copy our admin username and our admin password. Oops, did a control C there. Username and password. And now we are logged in to our WordPress dashboard. One thing that we definitely wanna do is probably change our password. I don't wanna use this long password. So I'm going to go down here, click on generate password, and I'm going to type out something. We can click confirm the use of weak password and click update profile. Definitely choose something that's strong, but something that you can also remember. So there we have it. We have our WordPress site working. We have the base theme installed and our server is successfully running WordPress. If you'd like, you can check out the performance of it by going to tools.pingdom.com and enter in our website address. And I'm going to start a load test here. And just to make sure that our website is working in other parts of the world. So from Dallas, Texas, loading our, from our server in New York, we're getting under half a second load times. Now, obviously, this might go up as we start to add content, images, themes, plugins, and etc. But we are already operating on an extremely fast WordPress site. 
and we've hardly started um, doing all of the customization that we have yet to do for our site. So we'll get started in the next lesson by securing our site with Let's Encrypt and Easy Engine. And then further down the line, I'll show you more tips and tricks of plugins, themes, and content management within WordPress. I hope you liked the tutorial and if you have any problems with this, you can contact me and my team below this video. So check the links below. See you soon.